Hello and welcome to the Office 365 for Education Learning Snack. Today's topic is Link Online and my name is Mark Garcia. I'm a cloud architect for U.S. education in Microsoft. The first question I get asked a lot is, you know, what exactly can Link Online do? And it can do several things. So the first is it can do instant messaging, which is the ability to instantly message amongst folks uh, in your organization or even in some cases outside of your organization. Uh, you can also do what's called point-to-point -point audio and video chat. If I want to do a quick video chat with my peers, uh, like similar to like a Skype scenario, we can do point-to-point -point video uh, chat. Presence is an incredibly valuable uh, component, which allows you to determine whether someone is um, available away from their desk, maybe teaching in a class. Uh, so it gives you a good insight as to uh, someone's current status or state. And then the last thing you can do is one-to-many conferencing. So you can do big webinars or web conferences. Uh, whether you're on a PC or a Mac, you can hear the audio and video on both. Uh, and also, you can do desktop sharing on either a PC or a Mac. So a PC user can share their desktop with a Mac user. A Mac user can share with uh, their desktop with a PC user. For external join, so maybe like a student scenario, you have students that need to join your webinar or your lecture remotely. Students can join via the browser or via a thick PC client where they can hear audio and video as well. As far as size of those meetings, it's currently soft limited to about 250 attendees per meeting. We are looking to up that to around 1,000 attendees per meeting in the near future. So if you haven't seen the link client, this is what the link client looks like. Uh, it's all integrated, so all of your instant messaging, your video, and your conferences uh, are all embedded into a single client. So you don't have to have multiple clients for different experiences. Uh, here you can see what a, a meeting looks like. So this would be your typical meeting scenario. You can see the video. You can see the PowerPoint there on the right-hand side. You can do annotations on the PowerPoint. You can also see the surround video down below. So if you have a, a Polycom CX-5000 or a roundtable uh, video camera, uh, you can provide surround video within the meeting and get an, an immersed, uh, you know, where you're within, uh, feel like you're in that room where you can see everybody in the room in a surround video fashion. You can schedule the meeting via Outlook or via web scheduler. We've just added web scheduling capabilities. As I said, desktop sharing is supported. The ability to upload PowerPoints and do annotations, uh, panoramic or uh, high definition video. Interactive whiteboard, so if you want to do, uh, you know, draw some diagrams, you can have an interactive whiteboard or do things like cut and paste and, and share a, p a pasted uh, screenshot, for example. Lecture capture is another big ask in education. That is coming in the near future where you can record the lecture. Uh, this meeting itself here is a recorded link meeting, and so you can get a sense of what how that works together. Uh, Third-party audio conferencing bridge support is available as well if you want to uh, add a 800 number to your uh, webinars or to your meetings. Uh, we can do that at an extra charge. So let's take a look quickly at the Link Mac experience. If you're not familiar with it, this is what it looks like on the Mac. You can see it's a very rich experience. You have photo capabilities if you uh, inject photos into Active Directory via Dersync. Uh, this is what the Mac client looks like when you're Sharing your desktop, so someone's sharing the desktop and the other Mac user can see that desktop. You can see the attendees in the meeting and the content that is shared. This is what it looks like from the PowerPoint view, so the Mac user can see the PowerPoint uh, being displayed as well. Additionally, we've just recently added support for smartphones. So we do have a link client for iPhone, which is available in the App Store, uh, a link client for Android, which is in the Android um, app marketplace, so a Windows Phone 7 client, which is available in the Windows Marketplace, uh, and then there's also a Nokia client. So this way you can get instant messaging uh, and presence on your smartphone device as well. Additionally, we've added iPad support for Link. So you can download the iPad client and connect to Link as well. So what are the actual plans within Link? There are two plans. There's 
Link Online Plan 1 and Link Online Plan 2. Link Online Plan 1 consists of instant messaging, point-to-point -point audio and video capabilities, and presence. And then Link Online Plan 2 includes everything in Plan 1 plus the conferencing capabilities, so the ability to do multi-party uh, audio and video um, sharing, desktop sharing, uh, PowerPoint upload, etc. As far as how the pricing goes, uh, there is no charge for Plan 1 or point for Plan 2 for students, but there is a monthly charge for faculty and staff. If you need more details about the pricing, contact your Microsoft uh, representatives to get you the pricing details. So next question I get asked, you know, what's the difference between Link On-Prem and Link Online? And the biggest difference that you see here is that Link On-Prem uh, can be uh, targeted as the ability to enhance or replace your existing PBX, so it has voice capabilities, enterprise voice capabilities, whereas Link Online at this time does not have enterprise voice capabilities. So that's your biggest difference. The IM and the conferencing capabilities are the same, but the enterprise voice or PBX replace type capabilities are not available with Link Online. So there are several uh, third-party uh, audio conferencing providers if you want to uh, incorporate like an 800 number with your Link Online meetings. We do have several partners that you can work with uh, at an additional charge. So what are some other things to note for Link Online? Link Online does have the ability to federate with Live at EDU uh, or Windows Live uh, instant messaging. You can also uh, federate with other uh, Link Online entities. So if you have someone else is on another school, for example, is on Link Online, you can federate with them. Or if another institution is on Link On-Prem, you can also federate with Link On-Prem. The other thing to note is if you want to do sort of a hybrid scenario where you have Link On-Prem and Link in the Cloud, currently we cannot do a what's called a shared SIP namespace between the two. You have to be a unique uh, shared uh, unique SIP namespace for on-prem versus online. And the last thing is we cannot federate with AOL, Yahoo, or uh, Google Talk at this stage. So if you're looking at Link on-prem, uh, sorry, Link online, uh, and you have Exchange on-prem, we do have rich capabilities for presence integration. However, we don't have the ability to light up presence inside of uh, Outlook web app. That's if your Exchange is on-prem. However, if Exchange online, you go with Exchange online as well as Link online, you have all the rich capabilities uh, that you do with Link on-prem. So your go-dos for today are to download and read the Link Online service description at this URL, or you can just do a search on Link Online service descriptions. I recommend you download that, read it, so you can get more specific details about Link Online. Thank you, and have a great day.